We're living people are gonna change. We're killing people, man. If you promote something that kills people, I got no love for you. I'm sorry. No love. Before we start, I would love for you guys to go follow my friend, What Can I Change? He is telling you exactly what the fat acceptance group does not want you to hear. The truth and reality of being obese. And he has my respect for that reason. Also, my 12 week weight loss group is now open to those of you who would like to get into a routine, throw out all the crash diets and learn how to lose weight and get healthy sustainably. That is linked below as well. I would love to work with you. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy, giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Good morning, everyone. We are talking about our cherished, beloved, popular but not as popular as Tess Holiday fat acceptance activist, Sana Lee, again. So I wanted to update you guys on what happened after I posted my last Sana Lee video. If you don't know who Sana Lee is, I will link that first video below. But basically, she is someone that believes that if you are trying to lose weight, you are fat phobic and you are under the spell of diet culture. If you do not want to date a fat person, then you are fat phobic. Men who do not want to have sex or do not find fat women attractive are fat phobic. And she advises that these men need to learn how to be attracted to fat women. And to do that, they need to watch fat porn so that they can mentally condition themselves to be attracted to this type of body. She also said, and I have a very high gay following, so I'm sure you guys will enjoy this. She also said that we are um, able to change who we are attracted to. So gay people, you hear that. If you are attracted, to whoever you're attracted to, she says that you can be mentally conditioned to learn to be attracted to someone else. So you know how those parents who have a gay kid are kind of worried about their gay child and they send them off to a very religious camp with other gay children that are problem kids because of their gayness so that they can be mentally conditioned to not be gay? Let's meet Ryan, your accountability buddy. Ryan thought he could never change, but now he's learning that with the power of Christ and prayer, he can have a whole new life. Over this way, we have the cafeteria. Pretty much that's what she's saying. She's giving off that little vibe. She didn't say to send you off to a, a camp, but she says that you can be mentally conditioned into what you find attractive. So that was cool, and you can find that video, once again, linked below with all the receipts and her posts of what she said. So after I posted the video, the whole normal routine happens when you talk about a certain someone in a video. I post it, you guys watch it, you guys see who was in the video, you guys get kind of irritated with the person, and then you slide into her comment section or her DMs. And from what I saw, a lot of people stayed very, very respectful to her and she was not having any of it. So she did the whole typical thing that influencers do when people do not agree with them. Block delete, ignore, and refuses to have an open discussion with anyone who has an opposing viewpoint as hers. And then decides to post in her stories how she doesn't care and she's unbothered. Are you unbothered, Sana Lee? Are you really that unbothered? Because if you were unbothered, then you wouldn't have to block people that had a different opinion than yours. You wouldn't have to silence people that had a different opinion of yours. And you wouldn't have to try and vilify people that had a different opinion of yours. So I'm just gonna say it, you guys. I don't like Sana Lee. And people who have been watching my videos for a while know that I try to listen to both sides of the story, both people's opinions, try to put my size six and a half feet in other people's shoes. And I've done that with Sana Lee, and I'm done. I'm done with being nice. I'm done with trying to reason with somebody that's like her. I'm pretty much done with just trying to understand her odd brain. She perpetuates the most bizarre and damaging content I have seen. And my limit is here. And you know where Sana Lee is? all the way past my limit and off the screen. So she is above the Michelle limits. And you know what happens when people are above the Michelle limit? They end up, yeah, that's right, on my list. See, right here. Number one. Now, Sonali, let me tell you what happens when you end up on my list. You win a lifetime of Michelle calling you out on your insane posts, your own personal video of Michelle critiquing every single word you say, and her lovely subscribers commenting on such. Congratulations. 
Now some of you might be saying, God, she's so obsessed with that sauna lead chick. I am. How can I not be? Have you seen some of her posts? Scratch that. All of her posts. Some of you might be saying, don't you have anything else better to do? I do. This is cutting into some major anime watching time, but I have decided to dedicate my time, put my anime watching time to the side for a moment, and help the people of the world fight against individuals like Sana Lee, who decide to post certain things, unhealthy things, damaging content that can kill people. If you promote something that kills people, I got no love for you. And some of you might be saying, just let her do whatever she wants. I am. And maybe you should take your own advice and let me do whatever I want because I will do whatever I want. And what I want to do is make videos about Sana Lee, who is a licensed therapist, which means she aids people and gives advice horrible advice, might I add, to people who are very vulnerable. So please and kindly take your own advice and take a seat right on the bed with Yoshi. She will be very happy for you to join her. She loves cuddles and head pats. Now let's get caught up on Sana Lee stories and posts. Only ever ate healthy, still died. Love it, I love it. We're starting off pretty strong here, Sana Lee. I just love that argument, the whole, I mean, we're all gonna die someday. Can you imagine if we use that context with any other addiction? Um, you know what? Might as well smoke some crack today because we're all gonna die someday. You know, I know I'm an alcoholic, but we're all gonna die someday. Might as well just <laughs> drench my throat in alcohol. Who cares if it makes me die faster? Because we're all gonna die someday. That post and point is weak, Sonali, as weak as a small toddler trying to pour milk into a bowl while the mom watches in utter fear. Treating people like obesity time bombs is fat phobic. Treating someone like an obesity time bomb is exactly what it sounds like. It happens when anyone acts like a fat person's fatness is a ticking time bomb about to explode and create a sudden case of disease or death. We experience this oftentimes as medical fat phobia. That time your doctor told you when you were 12 that you'd be dead by 21? Yeah, that is fat panic and old fashioned vanilla fat phobia. Wonderful, you know what? Parents, if you have an obese child at the age of 12 or really any age and you go to the doctor and they weigh him or her and they say your kid is obese and they're going to have issues as they age and they have a higher chance of dying because of their weight. That's not them telling you and informing you about your kid, that's them being fat phobic. That's what that is, people. That's what that is. Sana Lee, you do realize that being obese can cut your lifespan 14 years. You are a ticking time bomb. You are at risk for 13 different cancers and not to mention the typical thing we think of that could happen at any moment when we think of obesity. A lovely, beautiful heart attack. Sana Lee, stop saying get healthy when you mean get thin. First of all, first of all, Sana Lee, for a movement that that says that they are so accepting and they hate being, and they hate, you know, people judging them. You sure are judging the hell out of this small little phrase. Second of all, don't you dare, Sana Lee, okay? Take a phrase that I use and try to shift and turn it. When I say get healthy, I mean, yes, people, some people need to drop body fat because having too much body fat is unhealthy. Do we mean get thin? No, you're reading way too into it. We mean drop your body fat levels to a healthy state. Do not tell me what I mean. I can explain what I mean by myself. I don't need you. Second, yes, if I am working with a client that is of your size and they ask me how am I going to get healthier, I'm going to tell them that they need to drop body fat. Your size, Sonali, is very dangerous. The amount of body fat you have is very dangerous. There is a type of fat that you have, Sonali, called visceral fat, a very dangerous type of fat to have. Why? This is the fat that is around your abdominal section, but it's a very deep fat at that. It's around your internal organs your internal vital organs. Let's talk about the complications and things that can happen when you have a lot of visceral fats. Visceral fat can start causing health problems immediately. It can increase insulin resistance, even if you've never had diabetes or prediabetes. Research has found that this may be because a retinal binding protein that increases insulin resistance is secreted by this type of fat. Visceral fat can also raise blood pressure quickly. Most importantly, carrying excess visceral fat increases your risk for developing several 
serious, long-term, life-threatening medical conditions. These include, and probably not even limited to, heart attacks and heart disease, type 2 diabetes, stroke, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, Alzheimer's disease. And since we're on the topic of visceral fat, sauna Lee, and how being obese is healthy, sauna Lee, and how the obesity epidemic is not real and is just a myth, and how being fat is just liberating and amazing, sauna Lee, since we're on that topic, she posted a video, okay, of her doing some type of stretch or yoga or dance, I'm not sure what it was. And in between her fat folds, I can see some type of yeast infection or fungi infection, some type of thing that you get when you are obese. Sauna Lee. I showed this video and ran it through to a few of my nurses, didn't say anything, and they say that they see this all the time in obese patients who do not take care of themselves. And usually it's some type of yeast infection for not cleaning their folds. Sauna Lee, the woman who says that it is healthy and fun and liberating being obese. This is what happens when you are obese. It's very hard to clean in between the folds. It's very hard to reach in every single nook and cranny when you are obese. You guys, it's hard to wipe your but depending on how large you are and how high on the obesity scale that you are. And if you do not have good hygiene, there are a few gross things that can happen to your skin. And even if you do have good hygiene, you are still at risk for a few of the things that I'm going to tell you. If you are squeamish, you probably want to fast forward to this time point. But I recommend anyone watching this who says that obesity is just a joy to fully embrace all of these images with open arms. Enterotrigenous dermatitis, acanthosis nigricans, hyperkeratosis, and pressure injuries. I want to take a minute and talk about pressure injuries. Pressure injuries that develop in the obese population have slightly different characteristics because pressure is distributed somewhat differently. In patients of normal weight, high pressure points are seen over bony prominences. With the obese patient, a large amount of weight induced force is distributed over the entire supine surface as well as the bony prominence. It is extremely important that obese individuals perform regular skin fold inspections and clean in there regularly because the images and medical issues that I just showed you can happen. Do you know the issue with that though? It's very hard for someone who is at least on a least size to reach every single nook and cranny. And Sana Lee is so high and mighty and just really wants to prove to people that she is healthy, she probably would never admit to having any of these issues because once again, the obesity epidemic and everything that goes along with it is a myth. Even though Tess Holiday kind of proves me right and touches on the subject in this small post that she made on her Instagram where she is getting her makeup done and she's very hot and she airs out her boobs and her vagina with a caption saying, if you're a big girl, you'll understand. And I can relate to that for when I was bigger and to now. Us women, we've got more flappy flaps. This is, it's a flap. So imagine boobs all over your body. You've got creases in there. It's going to get a little moist. Ew, but realistic. And if you have more folds, you're going to produce more moisture. And if you do not clean it out, you are going to get the medical issues that I listed previously. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about was this ridiculous, ridiculous, post that she made in her stories in response to one of my subscribers trying to message her. I can tell that you most likely are at higher risk for diabetes than somebody with a lower body fat percentage, assuming neither of you have any family history of diabetes. Nope, that's still your fat phobia talking. You can be any size and get type 2 diabetes. Yes, that's true, but then she says this. It's called genetics and tough luck thumb down. Body size is not the cause, so stop with the stigma, people. Body size is not the cause. Right. You know what? I'm just going to drop out for this topic, and I'm going to let uh, James from Shredded Sports Science just take this one. So take it away, James. Have at it. It ain't just luck and genetics that causes type 2 diabetes. However, luck and genetics did cause this mass of shiny skin goodness upon my dome. Sonali is being a wee bit silly. Very simply, being obese changes the way that your body operates in many, many ways. Just one of them being, for example, adipose metabolism, which includes, amongst other factors, insulin resistance leading to type 2 diabetes. Sonali spreading that message is outright dangerous. And let me phrase this in terms that the science deniers can understand. Anyone can get hit by a bus, but if you stand in the road during rush hour, 
Do you see where I'm going with this? There is direct causation between obesity and type 2 diabetes in many, many ways, which is an insulin resistant state in the body where your body is unable to effectively use insulin and deal with blood sugar levels. Think of it this way. If you are in a large caloric surplus, a positive energy balance, including a high sugar intake, which I think it's fair to say would accurately reflect the eating habits of many obese people, that is a conducive state with insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. And that really is the most simple way I can explain it for science deniers. But just in case this person decides to open her mind to real science, here goes. The risk factor with obesity and disease such as type 2 diabetes is not just weight per se, absolutely your body mass is a factor. It also relates to visceral fat. Visceral fat is the deeper lying layers of fat which you cannot pinch or see, which surrounds your organs. This is highly dangerous in large amounts. And in addition to that, we can also look at large amounts of adipose tissue fat around the abdominal section of the body, which also significantly increases the risk factor for many diseases. Adiposity, meaning a state of obesity, which is a factor in many underlying metabolic dysfunctions can absolutely lead to insulin resistance and type two diabetes. But what I thought I would do for Sonali, do you even science Rashwata, is introduce some new vocabulary into her system. I'm going straight Sesame Street. You also got to eat fruit or veggies or meat if you want to be healthy and strong. How about we replace the word stigma with saving your life? And how about we replace the word phobia with ectopic fact deposition? What? Ooh, ectopic fat deposition. And ectopic fat essentially meaning the buildup of fat in the body where it should not be, aka in organs such as the liver, again, is a severe health risk. Obesity without doubt leads to the dysfunction of many organs in the body. And so very seriously, with anything like this, the question that I always ask is what is the liability on people putting out such dangerous information. Ah, uh, isn't James and his accent just adorable? It just gives off JoJo's bizarre adventure vibes. And the way that he backs up his claims with science, it's just refreshing. How does it feel, Sonali, to get told, served with scientific facts, secreting out of a very intelligent English man in the most proper way possible in a little over two minutes? We literally have a real life version of Pops from regular show. <laughs> Good show! Jolly good show! You guys asked who the fifth swole binger is, and let me introduce you to James from Shredded Sports Science. Yes, people, our crew of anti-fat acceptance warriors is growing. If you want more of that beautiful accent and that beautiful science and that beautiful bald head, head over to his page and you'll just smile with all the scientific backing. Well, you guys hear the music, that means it's time for me to go because it's the end of the video, but it's not the end of me talking about Sana Lee. She is on my list. Sana Lee, listen to this because I know you watch my things and you watch my Instagram. Come here, this is important. This is the most important thing that you can hear today probably. Come on, get a little closer, I do not bite. As long as you keep posting absolutely untrue, deadly, fat positive propaganda to people who are not educated in this topic to make yourself feel better for your looks, your physique, and your size. Sana Lee, I forever will continue this Sana Lee series, which I will probably Call it that. The Sonali series, it's got a nice ring to it, don't you think? Congrats. You deserve it because you know exactly what you're doing and I hope more people call you out on it. My name is Michelle McDaniel, this is my page. My thoughts will probably offend you and you know what? Usually despite the name of my channel's title, I don't try and offend people. I usually have some, some information and I try to see both sides and I don't want anyone to be offended if they do. It happens, but I try to see both both sides and put my opinion out there in a nice way. Today, I think it might be a little bit of a historical event on this channel because Sana Lee, I hope that you are offended because the crap that you post can kill someone. It's killing people, man. Remember everybody, you don't have to be a size two. Abs are great to have, but not needed to be healthy. But if you are trying to be healthy, I commend you and I give you a virtual gold star because that is not fat phobic. That is taking control of your life and loving yourself so much that you want to try to be as healthy as possible. So congrats, you get a gold star. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow me on Instagram. Oh, Yoshi also has an Instagram too. Okay, you guys, I will see you next time.
You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I've been on the flex since flex zone. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like bone crush. Boy, I got God, don't fear none. My line busy, take no calls. Feels like I don't have no flaws. Snakes in the grass, cut those off. Yo, squad shady, my bros rock. No breaks, we go, 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 go. Throw shade, that's a no, no, no. 